Hello, my name is Ramon. I hope your world is good. My world is fantastic. And recently I've had a lot of questions about my shooting board that goes along with my shooting plane. And this is not my design. It was made by a friend of mine, Tico Vogt. He used to make and sell these. Unfortunately, he no longer offers this, but I did reach out to him and he is okay with me sharing the design and some measurements. So let's check it out. All right, I should start out by saying or explaining what a shooting board is. Not everybody's gonna know this. And it's a pretty straightforward piece of equipment, but it's ideal for many tasks. And really it's the ultimate or essential piece of woodworking equipment, right? So let's say you have some miters, right? And you've cut 45 degrees on them but there might be some saw marks or maybe they're not true 45. This is the ideal tool to make those miters perfect. I don't mean close, I mean perfect. Say you have some drawer stock, right? And we need to get this miter, which is different than a miter in this profile, right? Same, 45 degrees, but different. Again, this is the tool for the job. Let me show you more. So to start, I'm gonna show the basic function and then we'll get into some of the details or key components that I love about this one, right? And so a shooting board is basically, and it doesn't have to be a complicated um, device like this one is, it's not really complicated, but this one certainly has some qualities that are above and beyond Certainly, my old shooting board was nothing like this, and when I got this one, I threw mine in the trash. Basically, we have a place for a shooting plane to ride on, and this is a Veritas shooting plane. It's designed for this, so you can see it with this shooting board, it captures the sole of the plane, or the side of the plane, in reality, because this would be the sole. And I know a lot of shooting boards, let me lock this guy down. A lot of shooting boards don't have this cleat, which I think this is one of the fantastic features, but we'll get to that here in a bit. So essentially we have this area where the plane slides. I like to add a little bit of, you could use wax, but I like this glide coat, top coat. Incidentally, when I started looking for a shooting board and shooting plane, or specifically when I was looking for a shooting plane, I went to order this one. I'm actually left-handed, but I'm quite ambi. I went to order this as a left-hand unit and there was a back you know, waiting period. So I ended up getting the right-hand version and um, this, this, this is fine. Tico was making left-hand and right-hand versions, but uh, I'm used to this being a right-hand version, so anyway. So in its basic function, we have this area where the plane slides. You can, you'll notice that this is a, the main table and it's slightly ramped, which is awesome for a couple of reasons. A, it's downhill, so that gives you some momentum as you're making the cut. We'll talk about that more in a bit. In addition, it utilizes more of the blade than if it was just going straight across. You could wear one area of your hand plane blade, but since this is ramped, it utilizes more of that width of the blade, which is a really awesome feature. This is a fence and that should be 90 degrees to this. And of course, we'll talk about that more in a bit. But in basic function, we are just shooting the edge or the end, I should say, of this board. You can hear it just slice, slice. And literally when I bring this back, oftentimes I'll hear just this, you know, half a thou or whatever distance the plane blade is sticking out as this board slides and meets the sole again. And the end of that, even though it's end grain, is just beautiful, smooth, flat, and ultimately,
square. So in its basic function, this is how you would hold a plane. My left foot is forward, my right foot is back because I'm using my right hand and I'm using the momentum of my body to push this rather than just my elbow and hand, right? Just moving forward. And another thing, this particular plane, I don't believe this handle's in the correct place. It should be up here, although I don't know what the plane would look like if the handle was closer, but I prefer holding my hand up here. So I let the crease of my hand right here fit this knob nests right in that. I can put my fingers right here against the blade. I can feel what's going on, but more importantly, I can put pressure toward the edge of that board or the end of that board. And by doing that, I can just get a beautiful, perfect cut. Three swipes and, well, got a little bit of dull area down at the bottom, which means perhaps my chop saw wasn't exactly square. Not an issue at all. Get one more slice here, boom. Just like that, clean, tight, beautiful, flat, all that. So that is a basic function of a shooting board and let's add this miter attachment. So this is set up for 45 degree angle. You can see Tico has put a mag switch on here underneath this table. There is a piece of metal that is uh, that attracts to that mag switch. There's a beautiful design. Let's put this dude back in place. Let's say you were cutting some trim material or a frame of some sort. Got this little fall off that was used for something else, but even a small piece like that, I can one swipe. That's clean and beautiful. Let's do this side. One swipe. And we literally have a joint or a seam that literally disappears. That is so awesome, right? Can remove that guy. And I'll show you more of these here in a bit. You can add this guy, and I think this is called a donkey's ear. That'll slip in place. Again, there's a mag switch underneath here. That is rock solid. I love that. So let's say you had some drawer material or you know, this type of a, a miter versus this type. You know, if you were trying to stand this up on a shooting board like this, you can see it would be quite awkward and not effective, of course, because the blade is not wide enough. So that's why this is used, donkey's ear, and we can stand this up at 45. We'll just let that contact the sole, boom. Hold it in place. You can see I've added sandpaper. I had mentioned, um, I think I had mentioned, maybe not, but I planned on putting some sandpaper on the fence. I think that would make a big difference because one of the key things when you're using a hand plane and a shooting board is to not let this move. The blade will have the propensity to push that piece of wood away from the blade. So you really need to hold that in place well. So we can bring that right up to it. Again, my fingers are right here. I'll start making that cut. I can feel that it's cutting more on this far edge, probably because my chop saw is a little bit out, but that's okay. That's why we're using a shooting board and shooting plane. One, two, three slices. You can make, you can hear when it makes a full slice all the way across. Even a small piece like this. Shouldn't be an issue to hold. Hold that right there. You see that? Beautiful, perfect miters.
All right, so some key features about this board that you could employ into making your own. I prefer this fence here to guide the shooting plane as it makes a cut. It uh, doesn't have any side plate, and if it does, these three machine screws are will allow for some adjustment. He even provides the alien key back there, Allen wrench, right? That is awesome. In addition, you can see this fence has these elongated slots, which means you can move this to create a, basically a zero clearance here at this end. So of course that sole makes contact right with that piece. It might even slice the first time, which I don't really particularly like cutting plywood with my hand plane, so just keep that in mind. The idea for a zero clearance, of course, is to reduce or eliminate tear out. If this is here flush like that, that supports those fibers on the back and you won't get any tear out. I believe the old method of doing that or dealing with that was to create a chamfer here and then cut right up to where that chamfer started, but this is much better. And once these are set, you know, you have quite a bit of use. You could even flip this around, looks like. This distance looks the same as that, so very well thought out. In addition, these here, I've never messed with them. They came in set at 90 degrees. They're pretty tight, but this could be rotated slightly, I believe, to ensure that these cuts are truly perpendicular and 90 degrees at the end. Same situation here. You can see he has these pins. I'm not really sure what those are. Beautiful design though. Hardened pins and they correspond or interlock with these uh, barrels or bushings that are precisely located I believe with CNC. And so it slips in place like that and just locks in beautiful and secure. I love, love, love that feature. It makes it quick and easy. You don't need a bunch of different accessories to create 45s. Same design here. These two would allow this to pivot slightly to ensure that you're 90 degrees at this edge. This zero clearance piece is also adjustable so you can get that contacting right to the sole of the plane. Lock that down. Boom, you are ready to roll. This accessory here, I believe I ended up getting it later. It uh, consists of just this section of plywood, not this cleat. But it also has these registration pins and doesn't really need the mag switch uh, to hold it in place because of the zero slack in those pins. It's a fantastic idea. But you can see this cleat I've added. I believe you can see that it's slightly curved. It has a concave curve. And with that, I was able to trim the ends of these curved pieces that I was adding to a table edge. And so by matching that curve, I was able to support the left end over here, put that in place. I, I ended up using a clamp to hold this really nice and secure. I was able to shoot those ends on a curved piece, which was really important to sneak up on the correct angle and to clean up any of these saw cuts. All of the corners turned out beautiful, and I'll show more of this build soon. You could make any angle you want just to add a cleat. So, fantastic addition right there. All right, so let's check out some more key features. This material here looks like a plywood, like a Baltic birch with bamboo. I'm not really sure. I know that's bamboo. It's probably for its wear ca capabilities, capacities. I'm not positive, but I think that's why he did that. And this is super slick. And let me pull this guy loose and show you. There's a little cavity here on each side. So if you get sawdust or debris, it will fall down in there and not uh, hinder the cut. Of course, like I mentioned before, this piece is adjustable. You do have to make sure when you clamp it, that uh, your bench dog doesn't press the side of that, squeezing this in, which I learned uh, the hard way. 
the first time I did it, I had it up too high and I noticed that the hand plane wouldn't slide. So not a big deal, right? I like how this is open here, which makes it easy to clamp. You can clamp it with a clamp this way. I typically use it on my bench if it's available. Very well built. Looks like 19 millimeter or 18 millimeter uh, plywood, three quarter plywood for this main bottom piece, as is this table. You can see it has a slight tilt. Let me get you some measurements. So overall, front to back is about 19 inches or, let's see, about 48 millimeters, okay? Overall width is 11 and a half inches, about 28 millimeters. Of course, this would need to be sized for your particular hand plane. This cleat is about an inch or 25 millimeters. This surface here is about 18 millimeters, maybe seven, seven and a quarter inches or so. You can see this is about inch and a quarter, maybe 35 millimeters. Here you can see the construction of this <clears throat> fence for the 45. Two pieces of wood. Pretty basic in its design, but extremely genius in function. It's really not basic in design either. It's just a fantastically designed shooting board. I love, love this thing. Okay. There you can see the mag switch. Forty-five degrees. A bit of sandpaper for better gription. Fantastic. So I'm making these. Oh, they go on a trunk lid of a 1939 Duke Jaguar kit car, and I believe they go like that. This will have a decorative edge. These are for my father-in-law. I need to cut the ends of these, so I need to get going, which means you need to get going. Anyway, thanks a ton for watching. I sincerely hope you got something out of this video. And remember to click, like, subscribe, learn.